okay great so what we will do today is uh, we have little uh, tough things coming up today so first uh, so i think krishna kumar was not there in the last uh, one last sunday and he joined i think he left early saturday so i think i'll just do a quick revision for him as well as you guys so that you know uh, because pre's concept that we learned is very important and hence we will once again visit that and so therefore let's see what we did last time okay so essentially what we did last time is that uh, we started with decision trees and decision trees are a very important component of machine learning precisely because of the fact that these uh, models are you know very intuitive to understand and very easy to implement so uh, uh you uh, just a second i'll mute you guys so if any question is there you can uh, um, just give me a chat okay uh just say a yes if you guys can hear me properly on my on the chat box awesome awesome okay so essentially what we did is that we understood uh, that a uh, linear regression is a kind of a parametric approach what is a parametric approach is that, that uh, we have a definite form on, of an equation which we want to solve and uh, in this what we were doing we were minimizing our rmsc and obtaining the betas okay now in a non parametric approach we do not have an equation we have a process okay so decision trees is basically a process where we are kind of uh, partitioning the variable space and finding the appropriate prediction within that space so for example if my data is two dimensional and let's say uh, class 1 or the yes uh, uh, is this, uh, these all variables are yes prediction and this are no so decision trees is basically kind of having partitions so for example let's say uh, you want to predict whether um, you want to uh, come back to india okay so let's say this is uh, 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 what can i say this is the population so people uh, according to the population of india people think if the population is too high very high in their city they want uh, in the city they want to come they will have a no and if the population is kind of moderate below the threshold in the city they want to come is yes and let's say here it's uh, crime rate okay so if the crime rate is very high above the threshold so let's say in percentage basis let's say 60% okay so above 60% if the crime rate is uh, let's say 60% is uh, kind of uh, i mean it's just a virtual number don't get into the details of it what is 60% crime rate but just a virtual number so if let's say crime rate is greater than 60% people don't want to come so if anyone asks you to what if the population if you are coming to you if you want to come back to vadodara 
which is has a moderate population and a less or low crime rate okay will will you come will the person come back or not okay so that prediction will be yes okay so basically it's partitioning the variable space into some different segments so that your decision becomes uh, more accurate for that particular space so you can see for this space i'm kind of predicting no and for this space i'm kind of predicting yes so i have partitioned my decision space into two parts okay but this is very easy because they were uh, clearly separable so for example these were the no's and these were the yeses so you see that uh, the data is actually separable by linear boundaries okay but there can be many cases wherein you know the data will not be linearly separable by partitions and that's where we you know um, uh, have to have better algorithms but it is very human like so uh, we can do both things uh, we can do a regression also and a classification also so where what we did here is a classification okay uh, but for example if you want to uh, do a regression what will be the uh, so you have to have these partitions and then as as granular as you can go okay and for this partition you will predict the mean okay so for example uh, let's say your data is uh, so for example if this is your data okay now uh, can be anything okay i'm not explaining with the uh, actual variables so if your x and y is there so if you want to predict for some value let, let's say this is x is greater than 250 and y is uh, greater than 100 okay so if someone asks what is your prediction and say for example you are predicting z and z is a continuous variable okay so uh, so uh, if someone asks you what is the uh, value of z when x is less than let's say 260 and y is let's say 101 okay so you have made your partitions you can be ma making more final partitions also let's say you can have this also this part let's say i'll color this you can have this part in your partition so you can take the mean of it okay so you take the mean of it and that's your prediction so i'll not go into too much details uh, because we have a lot to cover today so uh, we saw that uh, regression can be linear regression, uh, can be lasso, which is again a, a specific form of linear regression, um, which includes regularization. Okay, can be ridge, uh, same regularization can be elastic net, which we have just seen but not discussed. Okay, can be KNN, KNN we discussed last time, can be decision trees. Classification can be KNN, can be logistic regression, can be decision trees. Okay. And also we learn at the end of the class what is random forest also so random forest can also be used here and it can be used here also okay now our decision trees what we had seen is that yeah quick yeah hey, yeah quick question go ahead um given yeah i think i asked that given the data how to determine uh, which which of these um, model to apply Correct. How will we correct correct so uh, uh one we have a project uh next week which we have an end-to-end -end vis uh, vision of how to proceed also today i have something to show you uh, in terms of how you know uh, your model selection but i'll draw something uh, after we revise this i'll draw something on how your charter should look like okay so uh, how you should proceed but uh more, nevertheless we have a uh, uh, kind of a trial today and then when next week we do the uh, project it will be very easy for you guys to understand how you should proceed okay okay so um it's a human like decision ma making process 
we take decision step by step. Now we saw that the problem in a decision tree is that uh, the hierarchy of the decisions. Okay, for example, if I have age, income, and work x, and I want to predict the price range of a person, uh, price range of uh, the house that the person is gonna buy. Okay, now the decision tree will do a partition based on let's say age. Then let's let's say it will further down, further down take a decision on income and then a work experience. Okay, uh, so but who told this guy to take the age first? Why didn't it take the income first? Okay, or why didn't it take the work ex first? So we saw that this is kind of a uh, uh, problematic situation for a person for a uh, for a person who is trying to model because we don't want to give specific uh, uh, importance to a particular variable. So I think. Uh, this is where decision trees fails and you have to remember that this is called a greedy approach. Uh, it doesn't not ensure global optima may land up in local optima. Okay. So a greedy approach, why? Because it just sees at a particular um, at a particular node or a particular division, what is the reduction in the entropy? And last time we had a very uh, um, you know detailed discussion of entropy. So entropy is basically the loss function for a classification problem. Uh, um, Krishna Kumar, uh, this is for you specifically. Uh, uh, because I think you didn't attend the Sunday's class, so that's why it may be a little, little difficult for you to understand this. But like we had RMSE for regression problem, we have entropy for classification problem. So classification problems always uh, deal with probabilities. Okay, so whenever you're classifying a particular um, in a space, uh, whenever you're classifying yes or no or high or low, you you'll associate some probabilities to it. Okay, you don't say directly high or low. You say high is let, let's say its probability is 0.6 and low is 0.4. Okay, and those both should be equal to one. So uh, what Gini index says is basically here M denotes a particular node and K denotes the number of classes. Okay. So what we have seen is in a particular node, okay, uh, let's say when I, whenever I am doing um, income greater than 10,000 division. So let's say my whenever I divide my uh, this, this the problem what we are trying to do is price range. Okay, so let's say high or low. These, these are the only two classes. Okay, high is greater than $200,000 the price of the house uh, medium is uh, medium, let's not consider medium uh, we have low here okay low is less than one uh, less than 200,000 let's say okay so uh, at a particular node what is the entropy so at this point let's say your high and low distribution okay so uh, you have let's say you are having a filter of that you have already take only taken people whose age is greater than 40 you have landed up here okay in this node now in this node you want what is your entropy that you have uh, let's say your high is 0.6 your low is 0.4 so entropy is 0.6 into 0.4 okay now you want to say whether this next decision will make sense or not okay so what you'll do you will see here, let's say here your high becomes 0.8 and here becomes a low becomes 0.2 and here your low becomes 0.7 and high becomes 0.3. Okay, so what is your change of entropy? Your change of entropy is basically from 0.6 into 0.4. Okay, you have come down to 0.8 into 0.2 plus 0.7 into 0.3. Okay, so this change should be maximized okay this change should be maximized i mean 
you should end up in a um, uh, i mean the, your entropy should reduce okay so this this part okay this part should uh, go on so when will it be maximum when will the entropy may be maximum when your high is when high is 0.5 and low is 0.5 at this point of time your entropy will be maximum as you go closer to 1 let's say this goes to 1 this will be 0 this entropy will become low and as it approaches 1 one of them one of them approaches 1 then the entropy becomes 0 so your objective is to as you go down the tree your entropy should go on reducing okay so uh, the, let, let's see the formula here where is the formula so here if one is one equal to one the other will be zero so in that case entropy will be zero okay so remember this always that whenever you are building a decision tree or a classification problem you are trying to go to an entropy zero whenever you are dealing with a declaration problem we are trying to go to an rmse equal to zero krishna is this clear or do you want me to go into a little more detail because for others i think i showed all the calculations and all so for others i think it will be pretty clear okay krishna is clear that's awesome okay mm. okay now So we have discussed, uh, so after this, what uh, we have seen that, uh, okay, what was this regarding? Huh. So how do you do a prediction in decision trees? Okay, so for example, your decision tree is constructed such, and then a new data set, a new test data comes in. And what you have to do is basically check its age, okay, uh, check what whether i mean whether it is higher or lower than the threshold then you go down then you check the income and then like this you kind of flow through your decision tree and then come to this prediction okay so this is how your test data will flow in a decision tree so as i said this doesn't have any equation it's kind of a process okay uh, okay we saw this okay now uh, in uh, in regression, uh, we saw that why did we go proceed with uh, Ridge and Lasso is that because we want to, to regularize the, uh, uh, the RMC. I don't want to overfit. I don't want to have a line which is trying to overfit. Okay. So here we had the concept of Ridge and Lasso. Okay. Here what we have is called pruning okay so pruning is basically you don't want your tree to go on dividing and dividing and dividing unless and it uh, kind of goes to a single point okay so what we discussed is we are kind of having the similar data set in a particular prediction i don't want you to have so many partitions so that every point is you know falling into a single partition so that is called overfitting in terms of trees okay so as you as you can see if i go down my variance will increase and my bias will decrease oh sorry yeah bias will decrease and variance will increase whereas when you go up my variance will decrease and bias will increase so your optimum solution will be somewhere in the middle okay so uh, that's how you kind of uh, tune your model in decision trees okay so what are the uh, ways you can tune a model is uh, one is the max depth you are restricting your uh, depth of the tree to a certain number of nodes okay so let's say um, you want to keep or let's say not exactly nodes you want to restrict the number of cuts so this is one cut this is two second cut I mean uh, levels first level second level third level fourth level like this this is called the depth so how how deep you want to build your tree okay so this this is kind of you know restricting the depth of the tree then you have uh, or you can also use the minimum samples leaf node i mean after certain points so each of these nodes will keep on uh, so this is your full data 
okay then this will be some x and this will be full data minus x like this your uh, each nodes each node will go on having lesser lesser number of data points so let's say this is x by 2 and x by 2 so each node will decrease so i don't want to go to a point where each node will contain one data point okay so i want to uh, restrict that uh, with the minimum samples leaf node i can restrict my node to have at least minimum samples of let's say 20 data points okay so after 20 data points i don't want any uh, the tree to go any deeper okay so uh, and the other one is the max number of leaf nodes okay the max number of leaf nodes is basically these are called leaves where, which do not have a child so as you see as you go down your number of leaf nodes will increase okay uh, you want to restrict that so let's say you just want three leaf nodes okay so you just restrict till here i mean till here after that you will not go down okay so these are the ways you can you know prune your trees okay or just regularize your trees okay now uh, we have seen that what is a de decision tree classification and what was the regression okay uh, i think this is clear uh, okay so we have already seen that the partitions made by decision trees yeah krishna uh, you have a question i'll just unmute you just hold on Yeah, Krishna, go ahead. Yeah, uh, if you go to the three points you told, right? Just go one step up. The three points you told. How to consider the decision trees? Like, yeah, yeah. No, no, the the minimum, uh, yeah, this one, right? So the second point you're telling minimum a sample leaf node, right? Yeah. Then the third point you're telling maximum number of leaf nodes. Correct. Right? Huh. So it basically contradicts each other, right? No, no, no. So what we are trying to say is maximum number of leaf nodes. I mean, you want to restrict that to a point. Let's say I don't want three D see minimum samples as in minimum samples inside a leaf node. Okay. Samples yeah, that, that's great. So, so the minimum sample uh, uh, in a leaf node, you're telling say 20, right? Correct. So, but if you you the, you'll get the number of nodes the maximum number of nodes is the deeper you go you get more nodes right correct so whatever hits first will be your uh, oh. uh, will be your uh, this thing uh, will be the stop for your algorithm so for example you have restricted uh, to maximum number of leaf nodes you have restricted to let's say seven okay so you don't want more than seven leaf nodes at the base of your tree but okay. yes said that uh, i don't want minimum samples leaf node uh, to be less than 50 okay now let's say your 50 has already reached when your minimum leaf i mean the number of leaf nodes were four but you have kept this okay. seven so your algorithm will stop at four only okay okay so it, it basically takes this particular uh, uh, points into consideration like uh, sequentially like it no, takes no, the maximum no, it, then the minimum sample no, or no, not, it is something defined not sequentially what it will do is you, you you keep you feed this into the algorithm okay so you never know at what depth what number of nodes will be there or in a single node how many samples will be there you never know right so as a user yeah. as a user and there can be certain cases where your depth is not reaching okay so for example your depth is let's say 10 you are uh, good to go till 10 level okay but at let's say the fifth cut there's a single node which uh, has let's say only 10 samples so oh, okay. your depth has not reached yet but there is a, at a certain point there is a node which is only having 10 samples so your algorithm will stop at the fifth point fifth oh, okay, it will it. not go to so anyone this is first uh, hey. i mean uh, whichever comes first it will stop Oh, okay, got it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, okay. so uh, we have seen this uh, now. Uh, okay, so what we were discussing is that uh, the uh, the 
challenge with the decision tree is that uh, the cuts will be only always made perpendicular to the axis okay so if some if you have a completely circular data okay then whatever you do i mean you'll get a bad accuracy so so that's why where your exploration of your data um, comes handy where you want to uh, see the data and uh, feel i mean see which model will work the best okay now after that what we uh, discussed is bagging a bagging is a process in which uh, now stand alone if you consider decision trees they are not very good in prediction okay because there are high chances of overfitting there are high chances of underfitting okay so you cannot have a decision tree standing alone and fitting your data so it is not very uh, accurate okay so here comes uh, your saviors so what do you do then then you start with bagging bagging uh, it's a separate process okay so now you have learned decision tree now bagging is a process you combine decision tree to a bagging and then you end up with a random forest model so what is bagging let's un let's understand so bagging is a process in which random samples from the data with replacement are taken up and model is uh, you fit a model on that individually on each of the sets and then take an average so um, let's say you have 100 data points you take you have told that you want to take random samples of let's say 20 points uh, with replacement so and you want to take 1000 samples so each sample so basically what you do is like you have 100 data points you take 20 samples uh, not 20 samples i mean 20 data points okay okay now you you have taken let's say thousand samples like this if you do without replacement then what how many you can take only five you can take right 20 into 500 but since i have said with replacement since i have said with replacement i can take any number of samples because i am replacing the data so you have taken thousand samples each 20 will have a different tree okay so each sample will have will have a different tree and then each of the tree will have an output which will be averaged in case of regression voted in case of classification okay so each tree uh, thousand trees will have so what why you're doing this this is uh, it's kind of a statistical concept where uh, you don't have to um, go into depth of what it is but uh, just remember this whenever you average out uncorrelated variables the variance decreases okay so uh, okay don't go into depth uh, uh, because uh, I mean it's a statistical concept or if you want i can show you uh, i mean derive this formula but it's a more hyper um, keep it uh, so okay I'll, I'll tell you only so x and when uh, let's say variance of x and variance of y okay now if you take the sum it's variance of x and y so this is variance of this is x squared and this is y squared okay if, if the mean equal to zero and all so if uh, variance of x y so this is variance of x plus variance of y plus 2 into covariance of x and y now if the 
if x and y is uncorrelated right so this will be zero so basically variance of x and variance of y so variance of x plus y will always be lesser than variance of x plus variance of y okay so uh, just uh, i mean don't go into depth of this but just remember for example if you have two multiple variables which are uncorrelated uncorrelated means they are separate they are not associated in any terms okay so uh, whenever you add these uncorrelated items what will happen is you'll end up in a result which is more uh, which is less variant okay less variance which has less variance imagine a scenario where we discussed right so for example you have a particular file which you have given to for example if you are given to a particular subordinate it will he'll come up with some a single insight okay now you think he has looked so hard into uh, this file he is biased to, uh, towards his thinking okay so what do you do you kind of uh, give this file to 10 of the subordinates and ask them to look independently okay independently is that they are uncorrelated okay so, so they work separately you said that you give this file to 10 of your subordinates and ask them to look at independently okay so what they will do is they'll go in separate rooms uncorrelated and come up with a better insight which is less biased more i mean less biased uh, and uh, less biased in that uh, uh, let's say english sense i mean uh, in uh, mathematical or statistical sense is less variant okay so it's less variant in uh, their insights and they'll come up with a better insight so 20 people contributing to your uh, insights separately is much more valuable than a single uh, guy hitting his head on a particular file okay so that's why the concept uh, the similar concept uh, comes okay so um, this is where your bagging will improve your efficiency right because your thousand trees are uh, operating independently on the same data sorry on the different data points and having different uh, uh, values then you take an average or you do a uh, classification if you're doing doing a classification you take a vote okay so we have seen all these things uh, so uh, this uh, the visual is also i think clear uh, okay so bagging uh, if you go to the right uh, you see bagging enables you to see different parts of the data without any biasness to any part okay now this is the same concept that carries forward to the random forest so random forest what it does is it is um, it takes all the advantages of a decision tree but uh, foregoes all the disadvantages so as i said that random uh, i why did the decision tree choose the first variable as the first variable or the second variable as the first variable there's a particular reasoning of the entropy but in case of random forest what it is doing it is following bagging and on top of that it is also doing random selection of prediction uh, predictors so let's say there are 10 features every time it will take for the first data set it will take first four features for the next data set it will take the next four features okay so it is kind of you don't want every uh, subordinate to look at the so for example the same example you are giving parts of the data to different subordinates and different variables you are giving so for example uh, your a subordinate will see only these variables your b subordinate c will see a completely different set of variables your c subordinate will see completely different set of variables so the chances of them cheating or correlating gets lesser right and that's why you come you come up with even a better uh, result than bagging what it used to be because bagging everyone was seeing the same variables okay so they might you know discuss uh, i mean cheat or correlate uh, within themselves saying oh you also seen this i have also seen this i think this is the uh insight so they might come up with the same kind of insight but even if you give them different variables okay they don't have any scope of cheating okay it's kind of different question papers different 
sequencing of questions papers and different questions also okay so there is no uh, probability of cheating or there's no probability of correlation in between the trees okay so when they come up with uh, to you you have all sets of different answers without any biasness so that's why uh, the random forest you know uh, excels so for example if your decision tree is let's say 30% accurate your random forest will may, may become 70% accurate that's how the difference comes so always remember in statistical knowledge okay whenever you're trying trying to average out your variance will reduce and that's why your model will become even better okay now just hold on for a couple of minutes i'll just be back Okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay, uh, let's continue. So, uh, so we have already seen this uh, increases the randomness in the selection. That is very important. Uh, the thumb rule is that your number of predictors in a single selection is equal to the num root of number of features. So, if you have 16 features. Uh, the random forest will take four of them at a particular with a particular data set. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, till this point it is clear to everyone. I hope. Okay. Now. Uh, so basically we have seen decision tree. We have seen uh, bagging. Then we saw decision tree plus bagging that is the random forest okay now next is basically boosting now uh, Till now, what we have talked is, you know, how to average out, how to, you know, do your increase or increase your bias or reduce your variance in the model and, you know, increase the independence of uh, people seeing that. But there's something called, I mean, there, it may be uh, this something called boosting, which says, I agree with you that randomness is required. But what about the fitting part? I mean, if everyone see, does not see and you're saying that uh, um, everyone will work independently, then you might even not get a good uh, prediction, right? There's always some importance in, uh, you know, having discussions, right? So boosting is kind of 
a system which is very interesting same thing you have the all the concepts are random forest okay so you have number of trees let's say thousand you have different number of predictors but the only difference is in random uh, yeah, you have different data that is also there okay um, but the only difference key difference is that your t1 t2 t3 t4 t till t500 in random forest they were kind of you know um, working independently here what it does is it says let me see if i have the drawing okay i don't have the drawing here so it says hey t1 you take the d1 you take p1 with it i mean d1 is the data and p1 is a predictor okay you do whatever you can okay you do whatever you can with this set i will take d2 and p2 with me but just pass me whatever you could not fit i mean let's say you give someone give uh, a up data set he says sir according to my business knowledge i have you know worked on this data i could do this much i uh, let's say this your t1 is kind of a supply chain expert he says i have looked all the parameters regarding the supply chain it's kind of how consultancies work okay i don't know what is the manufacturing side of it you please give to t2 so t1 says i could not fit this part t2 says okay no problem i will take d2 with me but also make make sure that the part which you could not fit comes to me okay so i will work on those so t2 will try his best to work on these elements but t2 will again fail on some part some different part y which he could not fit so this will y will go to t3 and similarly z will go to d4 and like this till the 500 trees are done you kind of hope that everyone with their own knowledge has kind of solved the problem okay so there is a little bit of collaboration in boosting okay so everyone is saying but there is no correlation okay keep keep in mind there is no correlation no one is discussing their problem he is saying that i could not fit this hence you do this okay so everyone with their own business knowledge or business expertise will kind uh, kind of you know fit the data okay so remember correlation is always dangerous whenever you are trying to reduce the uh, variance okay so there is no correlation this is not correlation everything is same okay everyone is working independently but now t1 is saying okay i could not do this i don't have this much of expertise i think you are a better guy who can solve this so it's kind of flowing flows like this so it's a kind of a series learning each of the next tree tries to fit what the previous one could not do okay boosting the error that was left by the previous tree and hence the name boosting okay yes sunil uh, we have uh, bagging and boosting uh, with an example so today um, uh, we will see um, random forest with uh, cross validation and how there are different max depth uh, different max depth Uh, increases or decreases the r square for your project next week we have everything uh, coming from bagging and boosting okay so uh, we will see that okay now uh, okay now we are starting a different uh, okay now let's first start with as support vector machines and then we'll go on to uh, boosting a uh, naive ways because uh, a support vector machine is kind of a similar thing
Okay. <clears throat> now, okay, let me first draw uh, what we have, you know, seen uh, as a So, uh, you are given a data first, okay? So, you have the data. You do, you first do cleaning. That is omit missing values. Okay. Scale or do a feature engineering okay we have seen uh, we'll see all these when we do our project okay so uh, how you know mm, this process is followed okay after you do this your next step is find the best model okay now here is what your expertise will lie in okay so how you see before that I forgot a step something called exploration now exploration is basically visualize how your data looks like after you see how your data looks like you will be able to see whether your it's a regression problem whether it's a classification problem okay if it's a regression problem start with a linear regression Okay. See the test RMS or cross validation score. What we saw in the last class. Okay. Let's say it's around seventy percent. Okay. Next is to go for a regularized linear regression see the cross val score i am not writing the test rmc because it's essentially the same thing let's say it is 75% okay so you are good till now now let's go to a non-linear model like decision trees see the cross value square let's say it is 81% okay mind you it might be that decision tree reduces your um, score okay so um, it may become 65 percent also so but uh, the a good approach is that you have to follow these steps uh, or it's not something written in concrete as you become more pro in model fitting you straight away start with random forest or you know uh, go with the better models uh, straight away but uh, like boosting and all directly but as a beginner you'll all you should always follow this tip it's more you know uh, good it's kind of hygienic approach to do okay huh? uh, one thing i forgot to hear it mentioned here is the very important part is after you decide this right 
before the model fitting i think i've already mentioned this in the feature engineering but a uh, special mention has to be there about feature selection okay a feature selection is very important okay i mean uh, it's kind of can make your model a garbage or can make your model uh, uh, the best okay the so feature selection is very important now how do you do a feature selection so when you do uh, if you do a linear regression a feature selection is always connected with the model okay it's not an independent uh, uh, independent process okay it's always connected to the model so for example you start if you start with a linear regression okay then what you do is you see the coefficients of the variables okay we'll see this how this is important okay similarly uh, regularized linear regression if you do a uh, lasso then it will automatically remove uh, the uh, unimportant if you do a ridge you still need to see the coefficient of the variables okay now here comes the very important interesting part that is your non linear model whenever you do a non linear model so featured selection is very easy here so in a decision tree not specifically decision tree i'll say uh, now i'll term decision tree and random forest in the tree based modeling so random forest gives you a very very powerful tool called the baruta plot okay the baruta plot is a very powerful tool to find the important features okay we will see this today how this will uh, this can be done in python so it's a very important tool uh, to do a feature selection uh, using random forest algorithm so it's the base of baruta plot is a random forest algorithm okay now after you do a random forest you uh, or you do a feature selection and then you uh, implement a random forest you again follow this step cross val score next you move on to boosting so boosting is basically you also see again a cross val score let's say so not to 89% now why pro people generally start with random forest is basically of baruta plot okay baruta plot is a very powerful feature to ex understand the variable which uh, linear regression does not give uh, i'll also tell you the answer uh, if anyone has the answer ready i think uh, that's good but uh, why why random forest is you know having a better power to find the features is basically it is considering the interactions so in random forest as we said the t1 t2 t3 and it is doing p1 on d1 p2 and d2 p3 and d3 okay so it is kind of seeing every variable and it kind of right now now knows that which variables are important so when in p1 let's say it is considering the first four features it knows that within the first first four, four feature which are the importance because of the gini index now in let's say p 
20 again these four features will be repeated and obviously if you have thousand trees that are being built and you just have let's say 10 features then there are obviously chance there will be repetitions right so let's say in p20 again in t20 these four features will be repeated okay again it will see which ones are important according to the gene index so overall it is getting a feel that out of thousand iterations my age in whenever age has come into the p1 or pi whenever age i have taken age age is always on the top okay so age is always on the top it means age is important irrespective of whatever i see whichever data point i see or whichever set i see so you see here it is taking interaction so age might come here with a different set of variables age might come here with a different set of variables again in p let's say 100 age may come with a different set of variables so it is saying that age in the presence of other variables is important or not okay so it's kind of plots a box plot if you guys know what is a box plot otherwise a box plot is basically your this is your median this is your first quartile and this is your third quartile so what are quartiles is basically um, uh, if you let's say arrange your data in ascending or descending order so uh, the first 25 percent is the first quartile 50 percent is the median 75 percent is the third quartile okay so it kind of says let's say uh, um, this is the importance and this is the age okay so it says out of thousand trees my importance lies between 95 percent to 80 percent with a medium of let's say 85 percent means this is very important now another um, feature may be like this my importance varied from uh, let's say 70 percent this is 65 million and 60 percent is so income so income is kind of lesser than age it gets a second rank age gets the first rank but nevertheless it's important what random forest or a baruta plot is that does is it's it's very powerful it's very intelligent what it does is it creates a random noise as a variable on the fly so whenever you start a um, random forest algorithm okay it creates a random noise and sees what is the importance of this random noise so this is your benchmark okay this is a benchmark box plot whatever is greater than what is what let's say its importance is let's say 50 percent or let's say its importance is 40 percent in the graph in the data so whatever is greater than 40 percent i mean whatever is greater than the noise is important whatever's importance is less than the noise this is not important so let's say your work x was only 30 percent important it means work x is kind of a predictor which is even worse than a noise to the data so i don't need that why will i keep a variable which is you know worse than the noise uh, to predict okay so it will not keep that variable in the uh, system so it it will give kind of a unimportant tag we'll see uh, what it gives okay so baruta plot is very important so once you become a pro uh, normally what you do is you straight away start with the baruta plot get the features do a random forest 
why people normally do a random forest is basically it's very intuitive and it's very easy to explain your superiors but if accuracy is more important to you then go for a boosting okay so this is typically uh, how you should operate when you become a pro for now you should follow this the top one i'm sorry there's a lag i think uh, so in this part before that so uh, you do a linear regression then you do a regularized linear regression then do go with a non linear model okay go with a decision tree and then do a boruta plot uh, feature engineering and then go for a random forest okay so this is how typically you should um, start this is what we talk for reg uh, regression what about classification okay classification is kind of the similar thing so uh, you start with the logistic regression you don't have a regularized logistic regression so you then straight away go to a decision tree you go to a random forest feature selection and then you go to a yes. it's kind of the same thing you are you do okay you can also have knn somewhere in between but people generally don't like knn as i told that it is kind of a lazy up learning approach and it uh, consumes a lot of computational power okay now this is clear right now what i had so uh, up all this is okay right so your tree all this is a kind of a tree approach okay this is kind of a linear uh, approach okay now classification okay i had uh, one thing to you know tell you so previously we were measuring accuracy okay so normally in classification you have something called a confusion matrix this is your actuals or uh, yeah sorry it's all the way around so you have actuals here you have predicted here suppose let's say you have 100 data points there are 90 yes 10 no okay in a data set this is called typically called an imbalanced class problem wherein yeses are much more than the nos okay it's typically called uh, typically called an imbalanced class problem so for example out of 90 yes actuals 90 yes let's say uh okay now for let, let's say this is for yes so you have predicted yet 80 so 80 actuals so this is called true positive false positive true negative false negative so uh let's say this is actual yes and no and this is predicted yes and no okay now out of 90 actuals you have predicted 80 truly you can oh, sorry yeah, this is uh okay so out of uh, 90 actuals yes so this is the column for actuals yes so this 80 plus this should be 10 right so basically out of 90 actuals 80 you have predicted correctly 
and 10 you have predicted wrong so this is i think false positive and this is false negative yeah so you have basically uh, uh just a second one thing i need to check okay no i, I think i was correct earlier okay. this is false Okay, so out of 90 yeses, you have predicted 80 yes correctly and 10 wrong. So these are called false negative. I mean, you have predict, predicted negatively. I mean, in a wrong way, you have predicted uh, 10 as negative, but they are actually yes, actually why positive. Okay, so just to make this make your life simple i'll just mark this as positive and negative just these are two classes okay so this is this will make more sense so if your if your actuals are positive and you have predicted positive then it's a true positive you have done a good job hooray so out of 90 positives you have predicted 80s as correct but then it means the rest 10 you have corrected predicted wrong right so you have predicted negative for a positive Similarly, for actual negatives, so actual negatives are 10. So this is 10 and this, this was 90. So out of 10 negative, okay, let's say you have predicted 6 wrong as positive and 4 correct as negative. Is everyone understanding this table? This is very important. Uh, should I redraw again? I think it's too clumsy. I, uh, I'll redraw again. It's... Okay. So uh, as I said that there are 90 yeses and 10 noes. Okay. So out of let's say 90 positive. Okay. You have let's say predicted 80 uh, correctly and 10 wrong. Similarly out of 10 noes you have predicted 4 wrong, 6 correctly. Uh, now what is your overall accuracy? Overall accuracy is tp plus tn divided by total so uh, total is 100 tp plus tn is 86 so your overall uh, your accuracy is 86 percent good right overall accuracy is good not bad but if you see an interesting part let's say i don't do anything okay i don't do anything i mark everyone yes okay even without the model if i mark everyone yes what will be my accuracy it will be 90 percent you did so much things you did so much of trouble you landed up with an accuracy of 86 percent i present this to my boss and my boss says what is this if i predict Everyone yes, still I will be 90% times correct because 90% of the data is yes, right? So, accuracy is not a very good measure to, you know, predict your uh, or measure your classification accuracy, okay? It is, can be very misleading in, especially in this case, when you have a imbalance class problem. So, what to do then? So people said, let me divide this problem into two. Let's see how good I'm predicting the positives and how good I'm predicting the negative. So how good I'm predicting the positives? I predicted out of 90 positive, I'm predicting 80 positive. So this is, uh, this is around 90%. Okay. And how good am I predicting the negatives? 
um, I am predicting the negatives. 60% bet good okay which is good okay now if I say I'm still at 90% if I even replace yes to all I'm still at 90% but this this does not make sense always you would see in a business problem the classes which are you know less uh, would I would say less populated in the data you always need to predict this so for example credit risk or credit credit default how many people do you think default on the credit out of let's say if you have uh, a base of a lakh customers or a million customers how many do you uh, think uh, default max to max i think 100 okay so you just have uh, out of a million you just have 100 people you know who may default because if it is too much default then the bank will go bankrupt right so always the business need is to predict the class which is less populated in the data so when you are just randomly giving yes to everyone your accuracy was 90 percent in terms of the yes but you are you were zero zero accurate in predicting the no here you are 60 percent accurate okay here you are 60 percent accurate now your objective is to increase this but in classification there there is some this very something called very something very interesting is you can always have thresholds okay so as i told what is the threshold threshold is something let's say um, Whenever I am running an algorithm, I am getting predictions, let's say point in terms of probabilities, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, like this I am getting probabilities. I can always set my threshold so that this can be 100%. Okay, I go to the lowest and say if this is less than this, I go to the highest low, uh, highest probability in terms of no, and I keep that as a threshold and say below this I will always predict uh, less than um, this thing. I mean, I will predict uh, low for that. You can always have a threshold and this is on the user, right? You, it's not even in the hands of the model. So you can always manipulate uh, the threshold. But the interesting part is if you try to manipulate this, your this part will go haywire. I mean, the positive accuracy will go down drastically. If you try to increase this, you will lose this. If you try to increase this, this you will lose this okay so i think there's a lag sorry uh, so uh, that's why it may sound weird when i'm uh, when i'm saying and drawing anyways so there's always a fight between increasing your positive class and increasing your negative class accuracy the thing is that you need to have your better business understanding in which uh, you want to ask whether you need the negative classes most or the positive classes most um, but uh, yeah, this is so mathematicians came up with an interesting formula. This is called the harmonic mean of the positive and negative accuracies. So if you have a number A and your number B, so your harmonic mean is basically. Okay, so 1 upon a plus 1 upon b or uh, 2 upon this. So this is called the, this is the harmonic mean formula. Why harmonic mean? Harmonic mean has a very interesting quantity. I mean, an interesting property. Harmonic mean of two numbers a and b will only increase when both increase. So for example, if you have arithmetic mean, this is called the arithmetic mean. So for example, your b can be 0 and a can be 100%. You still have a 50% accuracy but that is not the case of harmonic mean In a harmonic mean both should be high then only your accuracy so for example if you are uh, let's say this is 100% so this is 100 and this is 0 so 1 upon 0 this is infinite so infinite uh, so something divided by infinite is 0 so it means if 1 is 100% and 
and one is zero, you are basically getting a zero accuracy. But in an arithmetic, you will get the 50% accuracy, right? So it, uh, that's why whenever you do a classification problem, you try to reduce this harmonic mean. And if you opt, sorry, not reduce, increase the harmonic mean. And if you know that your harmonic mean has is the max, that will be the best model possible. Okay, so you have to maximize your harmonic mean. In statistic, this is called F score. Okay, so this is called F score. Uh, so every classification problem, you'll from now, uh, we will try to see what is the F score of the problem. Okay, and not the accuracy. Is this clear? Everyone is happy with the explanation. Anything more you want on this? This is very important and a very interesting concept in classification. So, uh, so just a uh, question. Yeah. Uh, this harmonic mean, it will be always maximum when I think A is equal to 50, B is equal to 50, right? Yeah. yeah. Mathematical. Yeah. 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 So it's so basically. So how basically, do you. No, not. I don't think. Uh, uh, if let's say if you are, it's hundred percent here. So let's say you are two upon one by hundred plus one by hundred. If both are hundred percent, then no, this will be hundred percent only. No, both can be hundred percent, right? If your model is very good, uh, then. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you are saying that individual considered. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. You have to strike a balance. Okay, I got it. Yeah, understood. Now. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Sunil, why are you so quiet today? You are not asking any questions. <laughs> yeah, I think. He... Sorry for that. <laughs> no, now I think I am not on mute. So basically, frankly speaking, I am not understanding most of these things. Um, not due to concept. Basically, I want to see data in action, end-to-end uh -huh. -end story. And for him, for that, I have to wait for last since project set. And I don't know why, because uh, I have learned at least around five or seven algos to do this. But still, I am not confident enough to go a small problem end to end. No, no, that, see, that hands So on. that, that uh, basically is, yeah, I agree, Subhadeep, I agree means you are teaching well, there is no doubt on that. But from my side, I'm losing my interest. Okay. That means uh, after that support, vector, vector matrix will come, there will be one more, two algo will come. Mm -hmm. And after that, this is more theoretical is going on. First two sessions, it was very good because I was able to correlate my story with Boston data. In okay. another one, I was able to... Irish data, but after that, um, it was just going random way. Okay. Just learning algorithm, but still, I am hoping that sometime it will be good for me. So for that time, I am waiting. Okay. So that is the reason I am not asking too many questions. Just I'm, I know after, once I will get those points, I have to go re, re retrace these videos once again. Because I am not correlating things. Uh, as for example, this one for us. Uh, means I want is there some data in scikit learn if that I want to play I want to see some diagrams how data scientists what they do how I have to proceed I'm really sorry for that but this this is the reason okay okay so Sunil um, uh, I think um, see why uh, I'll just uh, move on to the uh, this part uh, let's just a second Okay, so uh, see <clears throat> the hands-on I already have in my uh, today in, uh, charter, but see if you don't understand the oh, concept, okay. if you don't understand the okay. concepts, like for example, if you didn't understand this accuracy and this, if you don't have your theoreticals good enough, you will not be able to make sense of. You may good, you may understand this problem. What I show you right now. You may understand the problem here, but if you don't understand this basic foundation, it will be very difficult for you to go ahead when you are going for different data sets. 
I may give you an example with Boston data set that is already I have today uh, for my session, right? But if you don't understand, so for example, you will keep on tuning your model on the basis of accuracy and you will never achieve the best model. So that's why the first part of data science is to understand the theory. Okay, I'm not denying that um, hands-on is, uh, is uh, should not be done. But if you don't, see because these are the se a set of codes. If you go through my screen right now, these are a set of codes, okay? So I will run the codes and you'll get a uh, display. But what is happening behind it is very important for you to understand that. And if you don't understand that, you'll understand random forest, but you'll not understand SVM. If you understand SVM, you'll not understand boosting. This, this, so if you have any questions, you should stop me there and ask me why are we doing okay. this? How will this help me? Because everything which I'm telling you will ultimately help you in the modeling part. Okay, it's not that right now, for example, if I tell you Boston, I'll just run these codes. I'll say you have to run this code. You'll be happy. Okay, oh, I've seen this code happening and I've seen. But what is going in the background, if you don't understand, in future, if someone tells you to, you know, tune this model, I want better model, then you'll not be able to do this because you don't understand the background of it. So it's very, every class or every um, um, teacher, whenever he teaches data science, that uh, foundation of theory should be very strong, okay? Then only you go to the modeling part because modeling, frankly, writing codes uh, in Python is not difficult at all. It's not difficult, I'm saying you. You just search on Google, the, the uh, thing you are searching, you'll just get the answers. You want to you say, uh, search on Google, uh, fitting random forest on Python, you'll get the answers straight away. You just have to copy paste. Writing codes on Python is not difficult at all. But what is the difference between a person who is just coding and a person who is a data scientist? The difference is with the uh, understanding in the theory part, okay? So if someone says, this is my data and you fit a random forest, he'll say, why did you fit a random forest? And then you will not be able to answer it. Or let's say if you if you are giving the same question I said, the, the same example I told, right? If, if you are giving given an unimbalanced class problem and you go and predict something, which is 90% accuracy, you'll be happy, but it didn't, didn't make any sense because you have predicted the majority class. So this is it. So it, I'm not saying don't wait, don't do hands-on. Hands-on is equally important, but I think 80% of it is important of the theory, okay? So ask me questions. If you didn't understand me, ask me why uh, we, we are having this, okay? So, okay, so then now let's uh, move on to the theory, uh, hands-on part. Okay, so uh, we had seen this. So for example, uh, if you see this part where we are having, so I am doing on my on the Boston data set, okay? So in Boston data set, it's a regression problem. So we had already seen, uh, I'll just open the Boston data set. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. So just see uh, what it was just to have a revision. So there were number uh, 500 instances, 506 instances, 13 uh, predictors, and one was the target. Basically, uh, you are trying to predict the price. The price is not here. So based uh, based on these features, you are kind of trying to predict the price of the house. Okay. Now let's go back to the uh, code. 
So what we are trying to do is we are trying to fit a random forest, but before that we'll try to fit, see which features are important. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. From sklearn.ensemble import random forest regressor, you're importing the model. Then from Boruta, Boruta is again a module. You're importing the Boruta Pi. Okay. Now, after that, you're basically storing random forest regressor. So n estimators means the number of trees you want to uh, fit. The number of jobs is um, number of jobs you don't need to understand. These are computationally uh, important. And the max step, like we said, max. What is the max step? The max step of the tree. Okay. So you have uh, storing this particular information in this uh, in, uh, module, and then what you are doing is uh, you are creating a new object called the Baruta selector, which kind of uh, runs the Baruta Pi with the RFR model. Okay. So this is the model which you want to um, fit. Okay. So uh, if I change this depth uh, it will change here okay and the n estimators is auto it doesn't take n estimators of the random forest that you are told because it will do its own on its own you can also not specify this as auto uh, it can it will take the uh, uh, this thing from the random forest so sklearn dot data sets import load load boston so you are importing the boston data set you are importing the pipe plot uh, so in the Boston, you have the data and the target. Now you do a Boruta selector dot fit X, Y, and then you print the features and their ranking. So let's see what it gives. So this is the number of features that it has selected. Okay. So is the number of features that it has selected. And this is the rank of these features. So let's see the features uh, uh, here. So crime, crime is our first feature. The crime is important. It's very important. Okay. Rank one. Next, next is proportion of residential land zone for lots over 25. I mean, whatever did me. So, so uh, residential land for uh, 25,000 square feet and above, the model says that these are not important. Okay. So you understand this, right? So these are the features which get very good rank. I mean, and these are the important ones. Now, uh, normally you take um, uh, uh, take variables up to a rank three or four. Okay, so uh, the other ones you kind of okay. Let me run this and uh, I'll show you. Okay, now see how it is proceeding. So it uh, it is kind of it'll do iterations. Okay, the first iteration is uh, it has confirmed that there are zero important variables out of 13. 13 it has kept tentative. It has not rejected them. Okay, but it has called tentative. In the first iteration it could not find. In the second iteration it could not find. Like this, if you proceed. Slowly, you see it has started confirming in the 13th iteration. It has start. It has confirmed that 
nine features are important one is uh, tentative and three it has rejected already so if you see these iterations it will within 23 it is when within 23 iterations it says that i have nine features that are confirmed tentative is zero it doesn't have any confusion and rejected four of them have been rejected these are the rankings of it so these are the rankings of the features so this the features that you have fed in is basically serially whatever the data had is like crime z in indus uh, cures so uh, just let's see uh, let's see the features first So these are the features okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and the price is the target so it, it says that my crime is important my zn is not very important my indus is kind of rank 2 uh, my uh, what is chs chs is charged river dummy variable this is equal to 1 if track bounce river so you understand this right so basically it gives me the feature selection so accordingly what i do is i okay now let's see what this uh, uh if you have this So whatever has come down those iterations if you don't want to see you can just remove this okay and uh, just running it You see, so your score is 43 point, uh, your uh, R square, R square is 4.43. So basically, I'll tell you what is R square. So it's kind of a metric. So 0.437, I mean 43.7 percent, it's accurate. If you have all the features inside, okay, with a max depth of 6. Now let's increase this max depth to 10. I'll not run all these things. Please. See, I increased the depth to 10 and it has increased. It means when I restricted my uh, tree with a depth of 6, it didn't, it could not go further to predict it better. Now, let's say if I increase this, I remember this 48.5, okay? Now, if I increase this to 20, let's see what happens. See, it has now decreased. It means what happened is that we are tried 
too far we have tried to go too far and had uh, to overfit and that's why my cross validation score has reduced now if i do the same thing let's say 10 was here it had 48.5 now let's see if i increase the number of trees let's say i want to increase the number of trees to 500 what happens let's see this i am fitting on the whole data i have not selected the features yet next time uh, next uh, we'll do that we we'll save the features and then see how it improves are you guys getting this uh yeah so the, here i have a few questions yeah sure come we are most welcome <laughs> yeah so yeah sorry for that thank you yeah. so first question is that on which basis it decided a rank okay i mean uh, nine features are reported uh, and if we want to do means how based on the root mean square error or see means see, how it decided to see it. yeah see that's why i was focusing more on the theory part so in theory when i was drawing that box plot so what happens is when you have large number of trees dealing with different sets of predictors okay so for example you took uh, let's say there are how many predictors here 13 predictors what is root of 13 it's around let's say 3 point something okay so let's say assume 3 in an integer form so random forest what it is doing is it is taking three predictors at a time and it is understanding that how good whenever i'm cutting through the node how good is that let's say uh, let's pick up the crime rate okay the crime rate how good is that crime rate threshold i mean or the partition reducing my rmsc is it good is it bad it okay is moderate okay so based on that uh, partition my rmsc reduction or in classification i said gini index in a regression i said rmsc reduction how good that rmsc is being reduced if it is good enough then it means my uh, variable is important and i see this variable with context to other variables so let's say in the first uh, trial i take a crying z and indus in let's say after the 20th trial i take crying age this in the, in my 30th inter, uh, 30th trial i take crying red tax so with respect to all variables it is seen that how crime is important so that's where the interaction compart comes okay so your some of the variable may be important independently some of the variable may be important because in the presence of other variable okay so when you consider let's say um uh, let's say let's say okay let's say crime with respect to the average number of uh, rooms per dwelling do you think crime and rm will have any uh, or number of rooms have any interaction no right it will not have any interaction with the number of rooms but if you see crime with the uh, with the um, interaction with the age age is proportion of owner occupied units built prior to 1940 okay so if your large proportion of owners are already staying there with the 1940 they have old houses they probably would not be wanting to leave their houses right so when crime uh, as a variable comes with in a, with an interaction with the age you may have some different importance of crime vis-a-vis -vis, uh, when it is interacting with the number of rooms okay so this is how your large number of trees will understand the different variables on different data sets and see the reduction of rmc okay okay is not clear is it yeah no but uh, better no go on ask now uh, if it's not clear tell me okay so assuming uh, means still i'm trying to figure it out how it has decided means which algo it has used means uh as like it has dropped all the 12 predictors and use only one predictor with all the data no 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 or no. something else it has done what is random? or relative to other features no 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 what is random forest yes. doing do you remember this how, what we discussed with random forest what is random forest yes. what it is doing tell me yeah 
so it uh, in random forest basically out of 13 it has taken three or four whatever we have given correct so no we have not given those, those not, it has taken we have given uh, okay 13 variables but, uh, you, so assuming three uh, we can say correct you, by default whatever value it is huh. so it's taking three it's pk how much effect it has so whatever the errors it is coming it is going next level with the other three randomly selected correct now how it should be now when it is taking let's say the first yeah. three, first three so how did we, a decision p keep the age on the top you only answered last time right how it is defining age yeah. is on the top of the tree how it does It does, no, I don't have answer for that. It 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 does how it does on the based on the reduction of the Gini index. You remember that we created this partition age greater than forty, uh, and based on the reduction of the Gini index, it is saying that the age is more important. Similarly, based on the RMSE in terms of random forest or sorry in terms of regression problems, based on the RMSE it's reduction. For example, crime. Let's say greater than forty percent. It is uh, my prices are dro dropping drastically, and crime uh, greater than sorry less than forty percent. My prices are high. So my RMC in terms of uh, whenever I am trying to predict after this cut is improving or reducing, then my crime is a very good important factor. You understand this now? Yes, got it. So, so what if is there some way, hmm. as like one was equal to two, you given, so that we can select, we can see which predictors it has selected in the first iteration, which others in second iteration, and like that basically, so, so that you can visualize. Individually, or, individually, it not will not tell you which it is selecting. It will tell you at the end that I have selected these. Individually, it will not say that okay. uh, which. Uh, but but I I need to check there may be a because normally the verbose uh, itself tells whatever the model is doing inside so I don't think there should be any other way uh, I mean I have to check I'll get back to you if uh, that also can be displayed uh, but uh, I need to check on that okay okay. So, so uh, and other than that, nine uh, there are nine which are ranked one. Not 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 all. Nine, are nine. It, no no no. Nine have been confirmed. Nine are important. Nine. Okay. Okay. So nine has been confirmed. Nine have been okay. confirmed that are better than a random noise. Today only I explain right. Random forest is inducing a variable which is a random noise, and whatever is above that random noise is cal considered important. Okay. So. Nine have been classified important. Out of that, five are ranked one. It means they are very, very important. You have to consider them in the model. Okay. Okay. And uh, suppose if I want to see which is on top, uh, and I mean, I want to rank all the predictors which are affecting. Can I rank those? Yeah, it is already giving me the rank, right? If you see my screen, uh, where is it? You see, uh, I think uh, I have to run it again. See, the print Boruta selected dot ranking. It was giving rank right five, one, one, three, four. It gives the ranks of each of the various features. I'll wait. I'll I'll show. Okay. I'll show. Wait, wait. It's running. The algorithm is running. Yeah, you see the ranks. So the first feature is uh, ranked one. The fifth feature is ranked five. The second feature is a uh, third. Sorry, uh, I I told on a device. The first feature is ranked one. The second feature is ranked five. The third feature is 
ranked second these are the ranks so one means it is very important you have to consider them in the in your model second means it is okay it sh you should consider three means uh if you have computationally uh, good power then you can consider but you have to check that whether these are noise or not after four or five you can you know ignore those variables now do you understand now is it helping now yeah now yeah yeah that me i was looking for now i can understand how i have to go remiss how important is that gini index and uh, at exactly. the box so whenever i am training the theory pay your most attention to that because i again i try to everyone yes coding is not important coding is as a amateur also i can go on search in google and see okay i just everything is very intuitive in coding right you have to just copy paste it but if you don't understand the background behind it it will be very difficult for you to understand so for example all these questions right your uh, why this variable is being selected or how this ranking is coming i have already explained in my theory uh, based on the gini index based on the rmc so stop me right there because see i am putting very much good effort in you know uh, explaining the theory because i i think theory is the most important that's why i am drawing i am explaining everything if you don't understand the theory then your coding part will be very difficult and the foundation will not be there and it will be very difficult and as as long as you i accept that you want to have an end to end picture of how your model should proceed that you will get but when you get that if you don't are not able to trace back whatever you have learned for all these weeks or whatever uh, you have understood during the theory part then it will be not worthwhile right to understand that end to end also so stop me whenever yes. i am explaining you any question you have all right regarding um, model regarding calculation if it is getting too numeric stop me say that okay it is get, uh, getting too mathematical can you explain it in a simpler way but understand it don't leave it that okay i'll do the coding part and uh, i may get away with this because if you don't understand this it will not be helpful okay so just uh, bear with me we'll do everything <clears throat> now uh, <laughs> yeah now anyone else any ha anyone else has a question uh, regarding this formula so we are not still done yet so if you see n estimates meters now just uh, i'll remove this part uh, <clears throat> okay now see um, whenever you are having let's say uh, let's say let's run this you have you are running 500 trees and a depth of 10 okay what 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 was the answer, uh, what was the score uh, at 200 uh, 200 trees and 10 depth it was i think 48.5 right now we are doing for 500 and 10 depth let's see what is the score now i hope you guys understand this cross val score right we have done this a lot of times what is cross validation what is cv right everyone understands this give me a yes or no on the chat box i just got uh, an answer from uh, vasan krishna here yeah. okay what sunil sharad any confusion on cross validation and all okay so see it was 48.5 now it has come to 48.7 it means as i increase the number of i'm sorry as i increase the number of trees to 500 it means it is improving the model right now let's say i increase from uh, 500 to let's say i increase to 1000 let's see what happens remember this number 48.7 okay and don't think that 0.1 0.2 is not important right you know how uh, competitions international competitions they have uh, 
um, I mean people competing in the to the third decimal place. So it's very important to you know even increase 0.1, 0.2% .1 error in your model. So don't get uh, you know saddened by the fact that we're only dealing with 0.1. What if even if I get 45 or 45.1 or 45.7.2? This very makes a huge difference. Okay. It's running the model. So see, I have created thousand keys. It means it will take a lot of time. It is preparing thousand keys. It is preparing thousand uh, random data sets, so doing all those things back end. That's why it is taking a lot of time. And what is this scoring? Yeah, uh, 48.4. What was it previously? 48.7, right? Yeah, it was 48.7. Now it has decreased. It means, yes, Sunil, I'll answer that. Just a second. Let me complete this. 48.7 uh, was the earlier score. Now we have 48.4, right? So it has decreased. Okay. Now Sunil has a question. What is R square? So just park your question uh, on that. I'll answer that. Once I go back to my iPad, I'll explain you how, what is R square? Uh, just park your question there. Uh, now, see, now what I've done is I've selected only those features which are important. And I'm now trying to fit a ran new random forest with uh, 200 trees and max depth equal to 9. Let's see what is the score. This Krishna, I have a quick question. Uh... See, the range is like 48, right? 48 percent, say, it's around 50 percent. That that means you're telling us uh, 50 to 50, right? Which is not a good model, right? No, 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 no. Uh, second answer to your second question, it's not a good model. No, it is not a good, very good model because R square couldn't go up to 100 percent. So we are just trying with random forest and I have not even done a grid search to optimize the parameters i'm just showing you how your scores will change with respect to different parameters answer to your okay. second question whether this random forest is a good enough model no it is not a good enough model we'll see boosting on this and we'll see the score difference there okay so okay yeah now see when i selected those features here and i in a, implemented a new random forest you see how my score has increased it straight away went to 50.05 now let's say if I increase this to 500, let's see 500. You can ask me questions in between, right? When the model is running, so that doesn't uh, occupy our normal time. Okay. I'm just waiting for the answer, which yeah, should yeah. be greater than four eight four seven something. So, oh yeah, it's at least better. Sorry, I didn't get that answer. A uh, question: What what should be greater? I didn't. No, know. no. I I was just waiting that we have removed some features. Yeah, so yeah. it should come more than whatever we have seen and it has come. Correct, correct. So now see, I increased my number of trees to 500, but now it has started decreasing, right? So it was 50 in terms when I, it was 200. Let's keep 300. So this is not the optimal way to do this. We need to do a grid search, run a for loop, right? For, exa for example, starting from 100 with an interval of 100, so 100 to 1000 start with an interval of 100, 100, 200, 300 and see the scores there. But since it takes a lot of time to run that, I will, um, you know, uh, consume our time. So you guys can try that. OK, you just have to run a for loop. So it is not doing very good when I'm increasing the trees. It was go doing better when I had uh, 200 trees. But logically, it should not be better if we increase the estimator more and more. Sorry? Means uh, 
logically we should put in fridge estimator as much as we can no 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 not, not that see not like that uh when i told you about bias weight okay so what if yeah no, if you don't mind can i know estimator means number of rows which we are taking in no, action no. am i right no 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 number of estimators mean number of trees you want to fit number of trees oh, oh sorry number of trees you want to fit okay so okay one thing one very important so in, yeah just just a second let me continue. okay one important thing that yes. i have noted so when i ran a estimator of 200 and i had uh, initially done it my score was around 49% or 50% right now it is around 48% why this is happening because uh, random forest will is operating on different sets of data it may have occurred that at that point of data at that point of time it ha had some different set of data that's why its accuracy was so bad uh, good but now it has a different set of data that's why accuracy reduced okay so that variation will always be there um so don't get bogged down that uh, last time we had 209 this like uh, this time again 209 why the score is ring because you understand random forest is picking random sets of data every time right so it may not be the same every time okay so for example if i run re read on this uh, it will be different again uh, okay now let me do this max depth to well let's see what happens here yeah you were asking a question uh, sunil sorry yeah so basically number of estimated 200 means 200 random trees will be generated correct correct okay and uh, depth we are saying 12 correct that's a max so, depth not the depth uh, the max depth yeah max depth so on every uh, starting level there will be one node on the first level there will be two nodes because that is the binary tree correct 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 so maximum node which we can take 2 to the power 12 minus 1 this can be the maximum node correct 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 so one more thing basically uh, the columns which we have selected so we have removed no edge so it should be better than always 0.4847 something isn't it no so what happens why it's coming down so in, in our first iteration we got 50 percent right 50.05 i think this see uh, this has a different parameter okay let me have a common parameter and let's see what happens let's say i keep this 200 and i keep this as 9 yeah. i already showed you right that time it was high uh, when i selected these features so right now the feature the estimators are different inside and that's why it's different So see points four seven one, and this is what did I keep two hundred and nine, right? So two hundred and nine. See, it's better, right? With the same estimators. Of mm -hmm. number of trees and so so this is uh, krishna so you're telling every run you do it takes different data sets right correct correct different subsets of the that data is, not, not different data sets yeah, yeah subset no, different subset of data right so that means uh i'm not going to get uh, uh like a uh, like a constant value right correct correct there that, might be that might have have a problem right in the modeling mm -hmm. so no. let us say i run run the data and i get like say 60 percent right correct the same day same thing you run it again because of the different data subset of data 
it's going to give me like 37 so no, there's no, a big it, variation no, no it will not happen like so much so it can six from 60 percent it may go up to 61 or it decreases to 59 it will not go to 37 okay. it'll never happen it will just go to 37 no no it will just have go let's say plus minus two or three percent here and there that too not every time but again there is a, there is a procedure there is something called random state in computation where uh, no sorry set seed set seed is there uh, what it exactly does is it fixes the random state what was operated in the okay. previous model this next time we run the model same random states will be generated so that can also be done but uh, uh, answering to your question whether it will go from 60 to 37 it will never happen no, never happen no, no, but the, the thing is, it is inconsistency, right? The inconsistency is there. That's what I'm so, uh, see, that, coming to. That's what I'm saying. See, uh, modeling, it is all about um, statistics and data, right? It's not about you getting the actual number. There will be certain variations, right? But the, uh, yeah. uh, the real thing is that how good your accuracy is. So if it is, let's say 80% and it is going from 78 to 82, that is okay, not not different, not a problem. But if it is 40%, then you have, or 50%, then you have your uh, things to worry about, that your model is not good. But you don't have to worry about it, whether it is 82 or 81%. What, right. I, what I was trying to show you here, where the different decimal changes, is that how different things are, um, affecting the model okay so for example uh, if you change the number of trees and uh, you know uh, let's say increase it to 20,000 okay your uh, score will drastically come down because it, you have drastically overfitted the model so that's what I'm trying to yeah, yeah, that, that I understand see that that one I understand that is your parameter change right so right. we we can take, consider that as a parameter change but within the this thing because of the sub data uh, sub uh, data right uh, yeah. that changes your value changes See, the, my thing is two things right one is like okay I have this model I run it I say I, for example I get like 57 percent reach right then I tell okay let me run the other model say from random t I go to say boost for example right okay. or I go to decision make decision tree right uh, so when I run that, I say I get there, I get like say 60%. Then I tell, okay, 60% is good than 57. So I choose that. Correct. Right? That model. But this is because of the data set. There's a difference. So what you do is you. You know uh, what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So if you have that kind of doubt, so what you do is you done, yeah. run your model 10 times on the same data set and take an average of the score. You run it 10 times. Okay. Uh, your random forest, then take an average of the score and then compare. That is the best thing you can do right now. That because that randomness oh. part, which is actually adding to a, adding value to your model, has to be there, right? If you if it is everything is constant, then I mean there is no random forest, random and random forest, right? And but again to answer your question, you can always set your seed. And so set seed, what it does is. So when the computer is generating the random data set, subset data, I mean subset of the data, if you set the seed, it will always generate the same subset of data. Then you'll get the exact same scores. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Got it. But that is not a sure, so uh, Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Sunil. Uh, so uh, always we are getting around four seven or up to five zero max or point five zero max. We yeah. have got. Yeah, yeah. So is this the right answer? That is my question. Or mm -hmm. which is maximum we can get, or we have to do something else to get. How many models we have fit right now? So uh, around seven to eight. Seven to eight. I mean, not. Uh, so not, not right now. I mean, I mean, not uh, as a, a whole um, syllabus. Right now, what I have done is you have seen only random forest, right? L yes. You will go to boosting. You will go to neural networks. You will go to support vector machine. You see how much you can go, right? It's not. It's a never-ending journey. It's not that there's there's no particular right or wrong answer in modeling. If your data set is not good, however, for example, the first class I told you, stock prediction is a very noisy thing. 
you get the best of the best of the best models you can't can't improve beyond a certain uh, point because it is random the process is self is random so if the process itself is random then whatever model you fit will not be going anywhere but if relate this to my first class there's a god's equation right i don't know whether god generated random forest to uh, used uh, random forest to generate this data clearly it did, he did not because i'm just getting 50% r square but he might have in, used svm to generate this um, uh, process right in his own universe so i might try svm and, and i get a better so that's why learning all the models is very important that's how you you never know which model is going to get give you the best accuracy you never know you cannot tell no one we can tell if that if there's a single best model then why will anyone learn 10 15 models right so there's no single best model single best answer to any question you just have to try and see which score is the best that fits in so right now we have just done okay. random forest and we have just done feature selection and see so feature selection uh, selection you see it's as around 2 or 3% accuracy to your model right now there will be certain cases where feature selection may even add 10% accuracy okay so because if the other variables are too noisy then i mean it can happen that that feature uh, uh, those features are very bad so because see here it did not remove any feature it said tentative tentative so out of 13 i selected 9 although those four were not i mean uh, what did it say i mean was it confirmed what is what i think it was uh, uh, yeah four were unimportant i think i don't remember so four were unimportant so after uh, i get nine i tentative or four tentative were four i don't remember the what was the problem uh, just a second i can see i think i can do that anyways whatever it may be so it didn't say that those four are completely noise okay it says okay uh, you may or may not consider that i think that was answer so out of 13 i took out 9 so there can be a, there is a chance that those four were a noise but they were not i mean hugely bad for the model that's why you didn't see so much increase of accuracy when you did a feature selection so as you mean seed of 9 if i have to take 5 or 6 so can i get which 5 or 6 yeah you have the ranking on the base of the ranking you take you take all the rank ones okay. and you rank all take all i mean let's say you have want to take 6 you take all the ranks one rank ones they were i think 4 or 5 and then you take rank 2 that according to that you take because because in our case all the 9 or 10 predictors were rank 1 only no 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 they were There were four or five rank ones, not every one. There were two, three, four, five were also there. Only I think four or five were well rank ones. I'll just run it again. Wait. Yeah, that will be good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, these all are nine ones. Okay, okay, okay. So these were two. No, no, no. no. So it just uh, the first one that is one. What does it say that I am ranked one and you can't ignore me? Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, five means lowest one. You can ignore me. Yeah, yeah. Priority wise, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I am saying first. Second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. Again, nine you can ignore. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Correct. So out of these, nine are ranked on top priority. Correct. That you can't ignore me. Correct. Correct. 
So out of these nine, if assuming I have to select only five predictors, top five predictors, correct. Then uh, is there some algo which can let me know? Then your model cannot tell you. The model has already told you that these are the top five. Uh, I mean top nine. Okay. Uh, if you remove them, your model accuracy will reduce. Um, so you cannot ignore them. And if you have to ignore them, then you have to ignore them. Then it's on your choice. Randomly, you can select whichever five you can, whichever six you want. Okay. One thing which I could not understand. Could you open that medium page which you were showing last tab? Uh, there is data to describe. Where mean medium medium they have shown? Could you go down? It will be there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one counts me. Yeah, this one basically. I was trying to understand, but it was not describing in detail. Okay. So basically, these are the summary statistics. Uh, so normally, for example. What are the number of counts of this variable? So there are 506 instances. So that's why we get a 506 instance. What is the mean crime uh, across these 506? What is the standard deviation across these 506? What is the minimum? What is the 25 percentile? That is the first quartile that I explained today. Box plot. Remember, box plot. First quartile, 25 percent. Then 50 percent is the median. Then 75 is the third quartile, and then this is the maximum. Okay, median means uh, 3.59 if others are not considered or comparative to other one. Mean mean is 3.59. How can you have mean with respect to other ones? Mean is for a single variable, right? Mean is for crime. So crime, Correct. irrespective of anything else, I have a mean of 3.59. Okay, 50% is median of crime. 75% is the third quartile of crime, like that. So normally, see these things. Will, this, these, things the, yeah. these things. If Sorry, you, please. Wait. Yeah, yeah. You want to uh, ask, ask? On the same page, basically, he was describing that uh, crime we need to regularize means taking log because we can't consider. Then after that, finally, he has selected only four or five attributes. Correct, correct. So, so those were not described in detail. I don't know why. Okay, okay. So what it is doing is so feature selections is kind of an art. Okay, so there is no particular. So he might have used a different algorithm to see user feature selection. Boosting will have a different algorithm. Now, when I told feature engineering, okay, so feature engineering is something like what you told us transformation or scaling or something. So for example, if your data is too skewed, for example, your mean is 3.59. And your maximum is 88.9. It's a huge difference, right? So normally, whenever this median mean uh, and even your median is 0.25, your mean is 3.59. It means your data is skewed, right? So it means uh, whenever your okay, data, good. data is skewed, you might do a feature engineering. So see, we have a limited scope. I cannot tell everything uh, uh, related to uh, modeling, right? So that's why I didn't touch this part because I felt this is something where, where after, for example, when you are experts in the model, then you come back to all these things and you know try. So you remember that diagram where we said you fit a model and there's a feedback loop to your feature engineering and then again you build the model. So first we are going through the pipeline. First we are have seen the models because after doing all these things, let's say log transformation and all, you might increase two percent, but there might be a better model like boosting who which you can apply directly and increase 10 percent right so that's why that's that's why we need to understand the models first first let's go through the models see what the models offer see which models are for example we've moved on from linear regression to boosting and uh, we said that how boosting now next class we'll see uh, boosting how you know boosting will help uh, improve this accuracy and you see you'll see a tremendous change might be I cannot guarantee but there's a high chance that the boosting will have a good impact now after boosting we'll see SVM let's say now, SVM will have certain impact now after you have 
saturated all these things then you again come back and see what are the my features and how can i improve them a, this is the cycle typically because if i do feature engineering right now with you and i do a feature selection our selection is okay feature engineering if i spend too much time then you'll not get to know the models and if you don't know the models then you cannot never say that which is the best one so it's your call i mean if you want me to focus more of no no so so with now i realize you are correct and i was just checking myself so thanks a lot for correcting me we need yeah, yeah. to understand the model which you are describing yeah the see I'm sorry for myself no no uh, it you should not be sorry it's a, it's your for your, your own benefit i'm saying because understanding the model is of critical importance uh, so svm right now right i think we are out of time today that's why we will not start it with svm today but understanding the model is very important now okay apart from this since we don't have too much time uh, to start with a new topic any confusion uh, any doubts on the confusion matrix anyone has so uh, assuming uh, shwadeep we don't have sbm for time being we can consider correct so we have learned 5 or 6 so for this boston data first we a lot linear regression reach last show and then this one we have seen correct so which one we have to use for this data other than as we are measuring we don't know that we don't have so and I, how i told you right uh, you have seen random forest do, you, do does anyone remember how, what was the accuracy we were getting in linear regression uh, let me see if i have that i think so that was 0.28 0.28 is it uh, Just, uh, okay, this was the 1.58, 3.22. Okay, so I think uh, according to the standard deviation, I have to calculate the R square. Anyways, so we have to see how much we were getting in the regression. I think it would be around uh, 30%. Uh, so 30%. Now I did a random first. Yeah, I got, I got 50%. You see, 20% increase. Then now we will do boosting on it and see how much we get. Let's say we can get 60%. Okay, so. till now it means your best model is boosting right if you get over 60% accuracy in boosting and normally what happens is boosting and neural networks will always give you better accuracies than random forest but it is usually a good practice to start with the simpler models and go to a more complex model that's what so is this a neural network that is part of machine learning or that is a part of deep learning deep learning is a part of machine learning only it's a different type of mathematics that is involved but it is part of machine learning we'll see that we'll see that no problem okay now any so, uh, so based on this um... yeah go ahead Sorry. yeah go ahead yeah so based on, based on this it seems if we have boston type of data yeah then we have to use one by one every model or how how can we decide okay which one is should, means directly forest is better or in some case linear is better that's what i'm saying na when i when you are when you are just starting with data science always start with the simple model go with the go with the process what we have followed first do a linear regression okay. then do a range then a lasso then a decision tree then random forest and combined with feature selection and then random forest and then do a boosting always follow this once you get a hang of modeling you start with uh, the direct you go into boosting and all but for now keep that's why i am drawing that so many times right what is the structure you have to follow always follow that always remember that first you need to clean your data then you need to explore your data then you need to fit all these models according to the classification or regression whatever you have understood correct okay Yeah. Uh, so what if one uh, one else? Sorry for asking too many questions. Can we get a quick cheat? I Means uh, a small cheat type of things where we should know what are the points we have to learn. As for example, cross other than this model, uh, cross validation that one we need to remember. Uh, Gini index we need to remember. Then there is in forest we were using one term. So these are the terms. Quick quick. get a list of those terms uh these i mean it, uh, this is difficult to give you na because for you there will be some certain okay, terms yeah. which are important 
for oh, some okay. Okay. yeah i know that that is that is our job to yeah, that, write it down somewhere but follow my lecture and ask questions on the go so that it's clear for you because i don't want to go into a project and then uh, you say what is cross validation because then everything will uh, restart again so follow my lectures thoroughly the theory that i'm explaining is very important i'm again explaining for everyone okay theory is the most important part ask questions now i'll not um, go too much into that um, tell me if that confusion matrix is clear is that clear to everyone can i get a yes or no on my chat box okay uh, you mean that matrix which you have you drawn yeah true positive right? true negative false positive false negative that part okay so everyone is clear with that okay now since we are uh, closing the, uh, today's session that question on r square what is r square so r square is basically rmsc divided by sorry 1 minus rmsc divided by the standard deviation now uh, i'll just quickly open my ipad uh, so that i can explain you very fast just bear with me Okay, I don't know. There's some problem with the. Uh, I don't know why it's not. Anyways, I'll just explain you. Um, I think I I got logged up. Oh, okay, I got the problem. Just bear with me. Okay, I don't know. There's some problem. Anyways, uh, I think I'll I'll just explain here only. So, R square is basically um, one minus R M C divided by the standard deviation of the data. Now, standard deviation is basically what it is is kind of your deviation from the mean of the data right if you remember the, the formula of standard deviation it is sigma of each data point minus the mean whole square and then taking a square root you all remember this i hope standard deviation right now standard deviation is basically a deviation from a naive estimate if you say if anyone comes to you and says i have this data give me a very naive estimation what will be the best thing you can tell you can tell okay take the mean i don't know i don't have any model in uh, right now just take the mean no so i'll take okay take, let's take the mean now let's calculate what is the error that error is standard deviation 
now you have done so many so much you have done, you know you have broken your head you have done so much things and now you say that your error of the model is rmse right so rmse is right now and standard deviation is a naive estimate so basically how good you are on the basis of your standard deviation how better you have fitted your model so it is basically standard deviation minus rmse divided by standard deviation okay so uh, let's say uh, okay uh, let's say for example your rmse is very low okay so if your rmse is very low what will be your accuracy it will be 100% right so well, let's say if your rmse is zero it means your accuracy is 100% so standard deviation minus 0 divided by standard deviation into 100 is 100% it means you have completely explained the deviation of the data your rmse is zero it means you have completely explained the standard deviation of the data if your rmse equal to standard deviation means you have already only predicted the mean you have done nothing else than predicted the mean so standard deviation minus standard deviation divided by standard deviation is zero it means your accuracy is zero i think uh, i'm not very clear uh, with this uh, just let me just give me another chance if i can you know connect my ipad Can you guys see my iPad screen? I don't know why, what has not, it's not connecting. Yeah, okay, let's do it tomorrow, I think. We can do it tomorrow. Uh, I didn't, I, actually, I didn't want to leave it in the between. I think I joined the same network only. Okay, I think now it should work. Just hold on. Yeah, it works. Oh. It was broadcasting somewhere else. Okay, so I'll just keep you for three, two, three minutes. Okay. So uh, basically, what we are saying is a very naive estimate is your mean. Okay. Now, if someone comes you, to you and say you don't have a model, you just want to have a prediction. What will be your prediction? Your prediction will be mean. And what will the error? So, for example, you have hundred data points. Everywhere where you have predicted the mean. So what is the error in this data? So this will be x minus x bar 1, I mean the, this one, and then this one, so square plus this one, this one, like this. You will keep on adding. So basically the RMSC will be root of sigma xi minus x bar whole square i 1 to n, right? So RMSC in this case where you have just predicted the mean is the standard deviation, right? Now you have done a lot of uh, modeling and all. Now you have predictions. In case of X bar, you have prediction like Y hat, Y hat 1, Y hat 2, Y hat 3. So you have now these predictions. What is the error now? X minus Y 1 whole square plus x minus y1 whole square 2. So we now we have the new error. So this is called the RMSE after modeling. 
so your r square is equal to 1 minus rmac this one divided by standard deviation so for example when you just fit the mean to your data and do nothing else this rmac will become to standard deviation this will be 1 1 minus 1 equal to 0 it means your accuracy is 0 you have not done anything you just have fitted the mean which is equal to the standard deviation if you fit the mean and that it means you have contributed 0 to your modeling now you have done a lot of modeling and you have decreased your rmsc from the standard deviation till some point let's say point 2 of standard deviation this is your maximum error you can't get worse than this now you have reduced to point 2 of that error now this is 1 minus point 2 of standard deviation divided by standard deviation this is point 8 it means 80 percent so this r square is 80 percent okay so this is the r square basically 1 minus rmc divided by standard deviation this is the maximum error you can have in your data when you predict the mean and this is the error what you are predicting after modeling so 1 minus that ratio is equal to r square okay okay so let's close today and uh, um, so let's get back tomorrow okay good night everyone good night